Chapter 2, Section 2. How can we define the process architecture? Before we look at the different elements of a process architecture, let's first look at its most abstract view. That is the so-called process landscape model. Here you see an example of a process landscape model for a very specific company. You see that this landscape model typically distinguishes different categories of processes. We distinguish management processes, core processes and support processes. Essential for any company are core processes. These are specific to the company. Here you see that the core process of this company starts from procuring materials, producing products, marketing these products, delivering these products, and managing customer service for them. The support processes help that the core process can operate. The process of managing personnel helps that personnel is available uh, to conduct and work on the different steps. The manage information process helps that IT systems are in place to support the process. The manage asset process makes sure that the required technical infrastructure is there to conduct this process. The management processes make decisions over this process and its support processes. They're about defining the vision for the company, therefore they are related to developing the strategy and implementing this strategy, and they concern the management of risk. You may wonder why it is exactly these set of processes that are shown on this process landscape model. The process checklist helps us to find an answer. The process checklist is concerned with the question if something is suitable to be represented on such an abstract level of a process architecture. First question is, is it the process at all? If it is a process, we can associate it with a main activity. And such that main activity can be formulated as a verb and a corresponding noun. We also have to ask ourselves, is it a process that we can control? A key characteristic of a process is that it is a repetitive series of events and activities. Things that just happen occasionally and that we do occasionally are not suitable uh, to be represented as a process. We also have to ask ourselves, is it important enough to show it as a process? This can be related to the willingness of a customer to pay for the outcomes of the process or whether an internal unit is desiring these outcomes to, to be delivered. Major companies associate processes with criteria of value. For example, a major company may say, well, we only consider a process on such an abstract level if it generates more than 1 million euros of income per year. We also have to ask us about the scope of the process. Is it too big or too small? It's very suitable to identify a process in a one-to-one -one relationship with the desired outcome. This is the case, for example, if you're handling a loan request. A loan request comes in from a customer and is being processed and decided and the outcome is one loan. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the customer and the loan. Things are more complicated if it is a one-to-n or an n-to-n relationship. Finally, we have to ask ourselves, is it not too small? As a rule of thumb, 
there should be at least three different actors that are involved in the process. And it should be critical that the handoffs between these parties are organized well. So how can we conceptually describe these processes on a very abstract level? There are three mechanisms of describing them. The first is the so-called sequence relationship. With the sequence relationship, we express that activities are in a sequential order. Once one activity is done, the next one is started. We can also describe processes by help of decomposition. That means we identify a major overarching activity and we decompose it into its parts. Furthermore, we can identify specializations. There may be an activity for which we have different ways of doing it. We see here the example of handling a job application. Different legal rules may apply in Austria and Germany, so we have different variants of this. We have seen the process landscape model of a particular example. This is the most abstract view of a process architecture. It is a generic principle of process architectures that representations are decomposed into more fine granular representations. The pyramid on the left hand side shows this principle. We have the process landscape as the most abstract representation and elements of that process landscape are decomposed into overall business processes. We might use BPMN for representing them in more detail. On the right hand side we see a realistic example how that is organized in a specific company. British Telecom defines its process architectures on several levels ranging from A to F. Each of these levels describes processes at different levels of detail and the level of detail is increasing from A to F. That means at level F we have many fine granular representations of various activities of different processes, while at level A there is one overarching, very abstract representation. Roughly as a rule of thumb, you can think of that from each level to the next one, the number of elements increases by a factor of 10. If that is the case, we have at the top level one process landscape representation and then 10 more detailed representation on the next level, 100 more detailed representations on the third level and so forth. In companies in practice, you find often several thousands of process models being described as part of the process architecture. How can we define such a complex structure as the process architecture? We can start from scratch, but we can also reuse existing recommendations and best practices for organizing them. This is very helpful for managing complexity. One potential starting point is the APQC process classification framework. It defines various classes of processes and more fine granular processes at different more levels of detail. For example, on the left hand side top, consider the first category. This is called develop vision and strategy. And it includes all processes that are related to this. You see there are three subcategories define the business concept and long-term vision, develop business strategy, and execute and measure strategic initiatives. The APQC framework distinguishes further more detailed processes for these subcategories. The APQC framework 
distinguishes the strategic processes of developing vision and strategy, develop and manage product and services, market and sell products and services, deliver physical products, delivering services, and managing customer services. These can be understood as managerial and core processes of many companies. They are also common support processes, starting with number seven, develop and manage human capital, manage information technology, manage financial resources, acquire, construct and manage assets, manage enterprise risk, compliance, remediation and resilience, manage external relations and manage business capabilities. These are more generic processes that are not so distinct for many companies.